Hello, and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you're interested in my attempt to start using Scott Satterley's 10-shot load mode technique with the Hornady 147 grain ELD match in Alliant Reloader 22, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Now if you're catching this video and you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series yet, I'll put a card up so you can go back and at least watch that first video so you can understand a little bit better about what we're doing here and the series will make a little bit more sense. But feel free to stick around if you like and you can watch it later. So I will start off this video and tell you it's one of the ones that I thought about not actually posting. For the very specific reason that the velocity curves that we're going to discuss today were generated while fire forming this brass. As shown in one of my previous videos, the curves seem to be better generated on brass that has been previously fire formed and your standard reloading process performed. However, I did watch a video by Gavin Tube, aka Ultimate Reloader, and that seemed to be exactly what he was doing, so I thought I would not bother hiding the data from the audience. I'm really not sure of how much data I will use or I will regenerate, but it's here if you guys are interested. Getting straight into the load details for today, this is actually Federal Brass being fire formed during this test. The projectile we're using is the Hornady 147 grain ELD match, part number 26333. The powder is Alliant Reloader 22, loaded from 43.8 grains to 46.2 grains in 0.1 grain increments. The cartridge overall length we're using is 2.870, and the primer for today's video is CCI number 250 Large Rifle Magnum Primer. I certainly want, don't want to dwell on this information, but basically this is loosely based on the 6.5 guys video on this subject. The chart here is based on the data that they gave in their video and talking about looking for nice velocity plateaus in the graph where the charge weight changes but the velocity does not. And so without further ado, here's the chart we generated today. As you can see at 43.8 grains, our velocity actually starts at 2637. And as we go all the way to 46.2 grains, we actually max out at 27.31. Interesting enough, all the way from 43.8 grains all the way to 44.9, there are certain some interesting changes in our velocity. However, like I mentioned, since we're kind of looking for nodes, if I was to pick anything around there in the 26.40 range, I would actually pick 44.7 grains, seeing as the velocities around there seem to not be significantly different. Moving up the chart, I really don't see anything else until we get to somewhere around 45.6 grains where we find the velocity of 2695, and the two charges around that are only exactly one foot per second away. Only other real node to speak of on here is uh, somewhere around 46 grains where we see that, four, that 27, 22 feet per second load, and maybe there's a load to be had there. There's the graph. You guys can kind of decide what you think for yourselves, and if you'd like to see the video, I'll roll in the video here, and you guys can actually see the groups as they were shot. So guys, there you have it. Certainly kind of interesting. Shooting all the way from 43.8 grains to 46.2 grains. The actual overall group size that was achieved by that was 1.403 MOA. If you're wondering, the actual load data today is based on data that I got from Sierra's website for the 6.5 Creedmoor data for their 150 grain Sierra Match King. So we really don't have specific load data for this projectile. So as far as pressure, we might be a little low, maybe a little hot, but you guys will have to decide the data is simply the data I generated, and that is how I did it. So speaking of pressure signs, let's just take a look at the brass. Though as we do increase pressure, it seems the primers are a slight bit more flattened, there really are no other pressure signs to discuss. There's no ejector marks, and no other signs that I could find in the brass. I personally find this load range for my rifle to be perfectly safe to shoot. But you can see the brass, and decide what you think for yourself. 
Something a little bit interesting, I thought I'd go a little bit off the beaten path with Loader 22. Actually finding some data on it for the heavier projectiles I thought was interesting. And honestly, looking at the graph, it looks like there actually might be some plateaus that we could find to actually shoot this projectile. But, like I mentioned, we might actually have to repeat this test once we've fire-formed it and resized it, just to ensure our velocity nodes are where we think that they are. As you might have guessed, there's probably a little work up with something like this coming down the road here on the channel. We may duplicate some different projectiles of similar weights. I'm really not sure how useful this data will be for you guys, but at the end of the day, it's really all about identifying an accurate load for our rifle as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can. As we continue down this road, we may touch on primer selection, possibly picking different neck tension, or any other ideas that we have from our subscribers. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and find it informative. If you have any questions or comments on the video, please put those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, and as always, until next week, stay safe in small groups.